we live in the greatest nation on earth because we live as free men and women. So the question before us today is whether our freedom is the source of problems in America, as Representative Sean Caston believes, or the solution to our problems, as I believe. That's why I asked you to join me here this evening. We have a big question to answer in the 2020 election. Are our freedoms and free enterprise system the problems or the path forward? Sean Caston wants you to believe that getting rid of private health insurance, deindustrializing our economy, and raising your taxes makes you more free. Jeannie Ives, good to see you again, and thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. Thanks for having me on, Terry. We, uh, you know, the last time we spoke, uh, we were just catching up, and you were not uh, running for anything at the time. Uh, behind the scenes, we, I knew you were considering at least running for the sixth congressional race, and now you've officially announced. What was the tipping point in your decision to run? Well, you, you don't take on a race like this lightly, and you have to make sure that, you know, you, you've looked at everything that's important to a race like this. So uh, for me, that was including that uh, the support folks were there, that the people that were core to my team during the governor's uh, race were also interested in helping me with this race. I can't do anything like this by myself. So it's been a probably two or three month process to make sure that we were going to have the support that we need. And so, uh, but the reason we're getting in truthfully, it's because um, Sean Caston, who will be my opponent on the Democrat side, look, he, he, Illinois is in the dumpster in terms of its finances, worst run state in the union, worst pension um, liability, uh, you know, greatest out migration. It just goes on and on. And it's because you have big Democrat government policies and we don't need to export that to the federal level. I mean, let, let's just be honest with you. We understand that politicians make decisions that will impact people for decades. And I think my, my son, who is a millennial, summed it up best last night in his introduction of me, which by the way, I did not write, but he essentially said, look, the politicians are making decisions right now that will affect my future. And I really don't trust them, but I do trust my mom. And I think that her voice is needed on a bigger stage to help impact uh, uh, me and your children and everybody else. And so I think that's really why the impetus to run. We've seen Democrat policies destroy the state of Illinois. We cannot level that at all level. And, and Sean Caston is all about more government. Mm -hmm. Part of your uh, opening address that uh, you, you released a video uh, that the Illinois Channel will put on our website, but um, you had talked about freedoms. Do you, is what are going to be the themes of your campaign, and is there a theme, and, and would freedom uh, of the individual be part of that? Let me start out. I am proud to be an American, and I feel very fortunate to live in the greatest nation in in a, in the country in the entire world, and it's the greatest country because we are free men and free women. But we know that government can take that away in an instant based on their policies. And it's like a seesaw. The more government you get, the less freedom you get. And the Democrats, especially at the federal level, they are all about more government. And as I said before, we know what happens when you have too much government. Just look at Illinois. It's in the dumpster economically compared to where it should be, compared to where its potential is. We underperform every economic indicator based on the size and the diversity of our economy and honestly, the, the resources that we have here, which is a highly skilled workforce, lots of great uh, transportation assets, and yet we cannot seem to, to you know, level up to where we should be. So it is a freedom. And Sean Caston literally will take your freedom away. He does not believe in the free enterprise system. He believes in the government's intervention in nearly every industry that you can imagine. And I just know that that's wrong. It's wrong for my family. It's wrong for my children. I know uh, uh, Kasson, who uh, won by about 22,000 votes over uh, Peter Roskam, who held the district for a number of years, and before him, Henry Hyde. So the 6th congressional seat has been in Republican hands for a long, long time. Kasson's the first, uh, that I can remember, first Democrat to have been elected yes. to that. I would think that would have weighed in your decision making on one hand that this is traditionally Republican district. 
Why do you think Peter Roskam lost the seat last November, and what would you be able to do to overcome that? There were a number of reasons that uh, the district flipped to Democrat. Probably one of the biggest reasons was that, uh, uh, you know, we had Rauner at the top of the ticket and then a very ineffective Republican Party. I don't know that the district has really slid left that much. Certainly there's been some demographic shift out of Chicago and Cook County and, and into really the sixth congressional district, which is a, a western, largely a western and northern suburban uh, district. And people move out here for our better schools, our safe streets, open space, um, and, and that's understandable. So there has been a best shift, but the, the rounder at, at the top ticket, the drag of the Republican Party not getting its act together, and then really a misstep, I think, the, the, at the federal level, the, the National Republican uh, Committee failed to really um, answer the core question about health care and pre-existing conditions. And that was a factor in this race. So I think those things, we can answer those questions. We've got, we, we know that we did protect pre-existing conditions 23 years prior to Obamacare in the state of Illinois. And I don't know why um, Congressman Roskam failed to really uh, identify that and, and say that on the campaign trail because he certainly voted for that program while he served in the Illinois House and Senate. And it was a great program destroyed by Obamacare. We had a solid answer there and nobody responded. So we're going to we're going to make sure people are informed. If you were uh, fortunate enough to be elected, uh, what would you hope to accomplish uh, in the uh, Congress? Well, I'll tell you what, it'll be nice to serve in the majority rather than a minority. <laughs> and I know a lot of people want to say, well, you weren't able to get things done in Springfield. Well, that, that that's absolutely patently not fault. That, that's completely false. Uh, I was able to pass um, some significant legislation in, in working with my Democrat colleagues. Uh, unfortunately, much of the good legislation I had got pushed aside uh, because Mike Madigan wasn't interested in passing it. And let's let's be frank here. They own they own this. If, if we had passed many of the bills that I had submitted, uh, we wouldn't be in as bad a position as we are. We would, the reform agenda would have already taken hold and people would have a lot more confidence to stay here and know that they're not just gonna get bled dry by the, the Democrats and, and more taxes. So, um, uh, you know, I hope to get a lot accomplished and I, I, I suspect that we will serve, I will serve in the majority and we can align interests and, and get something done on bringing down healthcare costs, opening up the marketplace to that. Uh, I would love to tackle higher education costs. One, I want to definitely get something done like that. On that, border security is high on my list. The rule of law, enforcing the rule of law is very important because if we fail to enforce the law in one respect, then how can we be le legitimately enforce it, and enforce it in any respect? And so uh, I think there's some core issues that have to be handled in terms of illegal immigration, border security, which secures the people and the citizens in this country. Um, and, and then of course, national defense. I mean, that's obviously important to me. You know, we, we had a number of years where people became familiar with you as a representative in the Illinois House. And so of course we were talking entirely about domestic issues really uh, and, and focusing on Illinois. So mm -hmm. people don't know what you think in terms of foreign policy, but you would be voting on some foreign policy we have any number of things. You mentioned the border. We also have the perceived threat, some think, uh, with China taking over, trying to push their military and grow it. Um, we have Iran. And and for those who don't know, uh, you are a, a graduate of West Point, so you do bring that to you and certainly an awareness of national security. Why don't you just share some of your ideas on what you think of America vis-a-vis -vis the world and our use of power and what we should do when we are threatened by other nations? Well, I grew up during the Cold War period and I entered West Point when, uh, under Ronald Reagan when his whole mantra was peace through strength. And he backed up his words like, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. He backed it up with real action by uh, expanding our military, uh, putting in a missile defense system uh, and, and taking the, the, Rush, the Soviets on. And, and so I, I, I agree with Ronald Reagan, who was very successful. After I left West Point, my first duty assignment was in West Germany. 
And while I was there, the wall came down. So I saw the fruition of somebody who not just spoke it, uh, what he wanted to do, but actually took action and, and made that achievable. The biggest thing here is that uh, by having a strong military, we are a deterrent to anybody attacking us in the future. And I think that's where we need to focus. We need to have a strong military. Uh, the most technologically sophisticated military be, need to be on the cutting edge of all of that. And as the mother of a Navy pilot, trust me, I want nothing more than for those pilots to fly safely and have the best equipment and the latest technology uh, on the planet. So um, I think that's where we need to start. We need to, we need to come from a position of strength before we uh, deal with any other um, military issue uh, in the world. I, obviously, president, all presidents are controversial. President Trump might be mm -hmm. more controversial than some others. On the other hand, he's supported by a lot of people, draws huge crowds, and is the president of the United States. Uh, as you look uh, or to go to Washington, and as you look at the uh, first two and a half years or so of the Trump administration, do you look to align yourself with the president on different issues? How do you, you know, with, on the economy or foreign affairs? in general. Um, I suspect, I, I also noted in your announcement address, I think you were trying to connect uh, Sean Kasten with some of the elements of his party that people say are extreme, the AOC and the crowd of the, what is it, the squad. Uh, others will as, probably try yeah. to attack you and, and tie you to the president and say he's an extremist and you're an extremist. So with all that in mind, I uh -huh. you know, yeah. How, how, how do you uh, kind of a preempt preemptory uh, uh, response to that? So first of all, I am not President Trump, and Trump is not me. Uh, but we certainly align on policy from a, a secure defense, securing our border, the rule of law, economic opportunity for everybody, uh, even criminal justice reform. I voted for my share of that when I was a state legislate, legislator. So uh, I, policy wise, I agree with people and, and people know me down in Springfield that I worked with anybody down there who also agreed with the same policy agenda that I had. And it didn't matter if they were Republican or Democrat. At the same time, I opposed uh, those who did not align with uh, policy that I thought was gonna move the state forward. So um, look, I've called out my Republicans almost as much as I've called out the Democrats when it came to bad choices on voting for unbalanced budget, voting for pension uh, kicks that would hurt people in the long term. So for me, it's been a policy choice all the time. And we can't get wrapped up in uh, personality so much. And, and if, I, if I did that as a state legislator, I would have never gotten nothing done, quite frankly. Uh, there's a lot of different personalities. You have to work with all of them. Politicians, you know, people invest a whole lot of this into some sort of, you know, uh, what do I want to say, star, stardom or, um, you, you know, celebrity status or something like that. It, it's wrong. Politicians are the means to a policy end. And when they cease being that means, then you should replace them. So, uh, look, I, I'm on board with T Donald Trump and the economy and the tax cuts and the regulatory cuts. You know, I have, a, you know, the, as far as the tariffs go, I'm not, I'm a fr I support free trade but he is certainly handling China in the way that he needs to handle China at this time. And when you even talk to Illinois farmers who depend on that Chinese market for exports, especially of soybeans, they will tell you that they long-term understand what Donald Trump is trying to get done, which is fair trade. And what do you see happening now? You see a number of suppliers that have been placed in China literally picking up and moving their shops to other places in Southeast Asia. So China had better learn to be a good actor, otherwise they're going to lose a lot more business to their Southeast China neighbors, or South Asian neighbors, and that is appropriate, and that's what should be done. We should note that you are not the only Republican who has announced. Uh, the former Lieutenant Governor, Evelyn Sanguinetti, has also announced. I don't know if there are others. Those You and, and she are the only two, and as we tape this, you just mm -hmm. officially made the announcement uh, last night, I believe it was, uh, that you announced. Yes. Uh, it, it is something, I guess, that speaks to the nature of campaigning these days that you have to, because of the amount of money that has to be raised, probably one of the main reasons, that you have to start so early. And here, uh, Sean Kasson has been in office 
just six months as a freshman, uh, but one has to get prepared. I, I think the layman might ask, why are you starting now when the man's only held office for six months? Uh, are there are there any other uh, oh, representatives? He asked for a pay raise after only five months. <laughs> Sean Caston literally said nobody should work for peanuts, and I deserve a pay raise. He said you can't expect people, uh, just millionaires, which he is one apparently, to 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 run for office. You've got to pay us more to do this type of work. He makes them the top 5% of wage in the entire United States, and he is complaining he doesn't make enough, and that's after five months of literally getting nothing done. Of five months of voting 98% of the time with his very left colleagues, of which he is also one of them, by the way. He voted 98% of the time with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. He's same with Il Ilhan Omar. I mean, he is lock stop in with their program. And uh, now he wants you to pay him more for his leftist ideology. I mean, it's, it's just outrageous. You know, one of the uh, things, let me, when you bring up uh, AOC, as I'll refer to her, and we just had in the squad, and we just had the president making these comments. Uh, I don't want to go too far afield from your own candidacy here. But you bring, again, that background of a uh, someone who served in West Point. You have, I believe, two sons that are serving in the military. What do you make of these comments by those of the squad and, well, let me just leave it there, I guess. Honestly, it's pretty un-American for them to, uh, like AOC, to say that we, we've been running concentration camps in, in America. That's just nonsense. It, it, it's crazy talk. It shows a lack of understanding of history and, uh, and really what's going on at the border as well. And understanding that we do have a humanitarian crisis and by the way your party and you specifically block the relief that could have come a lot earlier uh, and created a lot less chaos so I have I don't respect uh, their positions on that I, I don't respect that they that they have made anti-semitic comments um, to, to one of our closest if not the only ally we really have in the Mideast uh, certainly our closest um, so, and the only democracy. So I just, uh, you know, I reject all of that. And uh, I, I wish they would just try and, and, and work together more, but they're, they seem to be so divisive. I just, it, it's, it's hard to understand that that would come out of a congressperson's uh, mouth, some of what has been said. This, uh, and same with Sean Caston, quite frankly. Sean Caston compared our president of the United States to Osama bin Laden. Seriously. It, 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 it's unbelievable that anyone would would say that. We, uh, I, I would say, uh, we certainly have had a different tenor in uh, when people attack the president for what he said. There, we've certainly had a different uh, tenor in the political debate, and it's becoming more and more extreme over the last decade or so, or perhaps even longer than that. Uh, it is, it is not. I. It is not just the president that has been making statements attacking others. Uh, he has been uh, obviously just factually attacked. In other words, uh, it's factual to say that he has been attacked from the very first day he became president, where uh, unlike the traditional way, many members of the Democratic Congress refused to even attend his administration or his swearing in, uh, which I thought well, was really a slap to our traditions. But. Absolutely. I mean, we all attend the, the, the swearing-ins of, of prominent, it's not like we boycotted a swearing-in uh, in Springfield. We never did that. Um, and uh, look, uh, Sean Caston, uh, honestly, his, his, you know, he himself has, has now joined the impeachment inquiry crowd, which that makes him in the minority of even the Democrats to do so. And this is after what you had, 500 people interviewed, uh, millions of pages of documents produced, uh, thousands of interviews. I, it, it's just unbelievable. And a two-year investigation that cost $35 million, and he's not satisfied. He wants impeachment inquiry. Uh, and truthfully, when it really looks like the Democrats set this all up from the beginning, from the Steele dossier on, it was paid for by the Clinton campaign. Uh, so 
uh, instead of getting something done for the people of Sixth District, finding solutions to to problems that we have on health care costs, on higher administration costs, and, and whatnot, he has instead fall, fallen with really the far left of his party and the likes of Jan Schakowsky and called for an impeachment inquiry. It's just nonsense. Jeannie Eisen, we're, we're talking to you a little bit earlier than what I anticipated because we had our first interview in about uh, six months or maybe even longer, just about three weeks ago. Uh, but we did right. want to talk to you and we appreciate the time after you just announced uh, yeah. and maybe we can do it again. You and I both know it makes it easier when we can do it the way we're doing it now, where we can do an interview yeah. over the internet. Just so I'm going to apologize both to you and, and the audience if here and there sometimes the internet, as we all know, slows down and speeds up. And so sometimes we might have just a little bit of a breaking up either of audio, hopefully not that, but of, of video. So to the extent that it's not perfect television, we hope you'll be, uh, you the viewers, be tolerant of that. And, uh, we're, we're trying to bring you, as we approach 2020, which will be an important election year, uh, the leading candidates and some of the key races, and certainly the 6th Congressional will be one of the key races for the reasons we already described, had been in Republican hands for years until Sean uh, mm -hmm. Kasson was elected in November, uh, last November. But Jeannie, as we know, you got to get running along too. So good to see you. And, uh, Thank hope, you so much. We hope we can visit having... with you again as uh, we move along in the congressional season and maybe uh, do a little more in depth on some certain issues. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Terry. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Hi folks, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.